My name is Paul Church from Clarity here in the UK. Welcome to another episode of Groovy Tuesday. I see we have a few people in the room already over on our YouTube page. So good morning to Karen and Ian. Hope you're both well. Um, eyes are coming in now. We can see that we've got 12 viewers. So we shall have our usual bit of waffling around um, until more of our friends join the party. Um, pull up a chair. Good morning, Mo. Hope you had a lovely Easter. Yes, nice and relaxed. Thank you. That's my check from Sue saying that all is good. So good morning. Here we come. Everyone's coming in this morning. Who have we got so far? We've got Mo. We've got Angela. Oh, let me just get rid of that little message. There we go. Okay, these pop-ups. The lovely Sue's in the room with you this morning. Um, so if you've got any questions, um, then she's there to help. I'm sure there we go. Some of our lovely design team will no doubt be in the room this morning. Um, what's the weather like of everybody today? Um, what's it like here? It's overcast, but the sun's trying to come out. It rained a little bit earlier. Um, yeah. So who have we got? Oh, lots of names. Names I'm not familiar with. So maybe we've got some newbies in the room. Um, let's have a scroll through. So we've got Nahid, we've got Ken, Alison, Helen, Love Poet from California. Um, we've also got Patricia, uh, Wendy, Celia. Celia's on holiday, so she's joining us live. Lynn, Nahid, Bobby, uh, Jean, who else we've got? Patricia, Ken again, all the usual suspects, Sharon and Angela so far. So, yeah, um, I hope everybody had a lovely Easter. It was a, a four day, um, well, I suppose a four day bank holiday really here in the UK. Good Friday, then Saturday, Sunday, and then bank holiday Monday. So who had loads of Easter eggs? who's still got loads of Easter eggs. Um, yeah, so um, yeah, it was nice to have a, a little bit of a break because um, last time I spoke, um, last Tuesday, um, we'll do, and then I was up to TV Wednesday and Thursday with the In the Garden um, collection from Linda Williams. That went down really well. Um, and then Thursday night, you had the shack with Barb finishing off your E for elephant, elephants, they were lovely. On the um, beautiful um, oh, uh, tea infusion papers, wasn't it, on the Darjeeling, really lovely. Um, so that was those. Um, and then, yeah, and what have we got for you this week? So today, Groovy Tuesday today, Thursday evening in the shack with Barb, and you'll be starting the letter F, I believe. F for fantastic or fan dabby dozy um, and then tv on sunday first sunday of the month three till five um, but we can talk about that a little bit later today can't we or this morning um so yeah so it's lovely to have company lovely james in the room as well um wendy's having a bad bad flare up today so she's watching in bed to cheer you up but i'm sure we can do our best to try and cheer you up, Wendy. Hope you feel better soon. Um, Josie's in the room as well. Lillian. There we go. Uh, do we get a sneaky peek? Well, Barb gave a sneaky peek of the TV show on Thursday. Um, so um, you can go back and watch the Thursday evening show. It was right towards the end. Um, and it's the um, the lovely Geisha stamp set um, reconfigured together with the lovely floral sprays and the Enzos and the Japanese symbols. Um, so yeah, lovely. Um, Mary says she's no Easter egg. She's a Slimming World girl. Oh, not even not even a nibble of one. So. So yeah, so yeah, so I don't have any sneaky peeks today. Um, so, but we're working on the lovely plate from Jane Nestorenko. 
Um, many of our friends at home have been joining in along as well. So it's an A4 plate and it's been taken Jane's designs and Jazz um, sort of bijou them, um, reduced them in size to create this lovely plate. Um, and I thought it was a perfect opportunity that we could have a look at white work um, and also um, coloring techniques. Because these are little itty bitty pieces, what sort of size are they? I think so in centimeters, they're four and a half centimeter square. So nice sort of achievable, doable pieces of um, artwork. Perfect for creating lovely designs. Um, whether you just use one of the squares, whether you use four or more, I mean, that'd make a lovely card if you chose just six of them, wouldn't it? Or maybe just come down one side and across the bottom with something in the middle. Um, we can have a look at some artwork that we've been looking at over the past few weeks. Have we got any newbies in the room today? Because um, I, I think this is, is a great one to sort of get started with. Well, not get started with, but I think it's a great one for um, practicing different um, techniques and skill sets. Um, so if I come in, I'm going to zoom in on the, the artwork. There we go. See, I, I love the, the simplicity, but the elegance of this piece of artwork. And this is a piece that's been put onto a frame. And I'm guessing, because it's got sequence on there, this has been created by Glynis. Let me have a look at that one. Yeah. So Glynis has created that piece. And we're looking at the dahlia for our project, aren't we, for this week and the previous weeks. But look. I mean, the, the attention to detail in these lovely scrolled frames as well. So we've got that piece there. Then I believe this one's from Julie Campbell. And this uses our lovely doodle dies to frame it. Then we've got this lovely rose. I'm going to guess this is another Glynis um, piece of artwork. See, I love that you can take something so beautiful and so small and make a, a gorgeous card from it then i think i'm getting yeah right with the names on that one this one's definitely francis so francis has taken this one rose sprig here and built a frame all the way around the outside and then put a lovely sentiment on the inside with love on your birthday then the next thing i've I think this one is Josie. Let's have a sneak. Yeah, this one's Josie. So I love that Josie's got his centerpiece there of the, the Agapanthus. And then um, the larger original design from Jane around the outside. Um, so that's that piece of artwork there. Ooh, who's done this one? Let me see if I can get I can't guess. There's no telltale signs on this one. Um uh, I reckon it could be Josie. Have a look. Is it a Josie? No, it's another Glynis. Um, this is using the easy layout plates from Linda Williams and just breaking up the sections. Then this one, this is definitely a Francis. I love this. It always, I have to really look at it in detail. Let me bring it in on this camera because this has all been pico cut. Isn't that mad? But it gives that lovely um, quilted look, doesn't it? Isn't that mad? Absolutely mad. I could, I'd probably get away with doing, say like this little section here. I don't know whether I would have, I could, but I don't know if I'd want to. <laughs> One snip and the game's over. Um, that's lovely though, isn't it? And then the next one. See, for me, the rose, the English rose, um, it's just Jane all over. And this one, I think it's, it's either a Josie or a Galinus. Let's have a look. It's a Glynis again. So taking the original artwork from Jane and then just finishing it off with a little bijou 
um, one as well. And then the final piece, this one, I think, no, <laughs> I don't know. See, I love the dahlias. I think the dahlias can be quite um, underrated at times, can't they? But I think they're a beautiful flower. And um, this one is Josie. Um, and that's using Jane's original frame, the picture frame from the collection. So you can see from the, the artwork, you can make pieces, cards, whether you do the toppers or um, larger cards, it has that versatility. I mean, you could put the dahlia in all four of them and do them in different colors. We've then got this piece, which is what we're working towards from, from Karen Jackson. So this is creating that lovely white work effect. And that's what we've been working on in um, the past couple of weeks. Um, so, um, so if you want, we're gonna carry on with that this week, adding more white work using the various different ball tools and the, the shader tool as well. Um, and we're just, it's one of those processes that has to be built up gradually. Um, and then the, the other lovely piece of artwork is from Carol Baker. And for those of you that may have missed out on this, this is a lovely little box and this is using the lattice on parchment. Barb's Bijou Floral Alphabet, JN for Jane Nestorenko. And for me, this is sort of all these lovely little pieces of artwork combined into one. And I think it was in uh, part one, I think it was part one or part two, we looked at how this had been constructed. Um, and we had some top tips from the design team on this one as well. But using up all your scraps of parchment, because say, these are only tiny little, what did I say it was? It was, um, yeah, I mean, these are five centimeters. So slightly bigger than um, the plates itself but using various different techniques. So this is more your traditional coloring. Then we've got some of our lovely gel pens on there on that butterfly. Using colored parchment, clear parchment, and then our lovely um, doodle frames around the outside as well. All different, but all giving different looks and finishing. So you imagine all of these as individual cards or a series of three of them, or four of them, or little notelets. Um, I mean, it's just very, very beautiful. And when you say break it down, they're all individual pieces of artwork. So that's some, some lovely artwork from the design team. I'm gonna pop that over to one side. Keep it nice and safe, and I'll pop the other work other work, the other artwork to one side as well, because what we're doing is we're heading towards this piece of artwork here um, from Karen. And we've been gradually building it up. We took the same design and it's just a, a little bit of a recap while everyone pulls up a chair. So this was traced out with the number one tool, the number two, the number three, and then which is barely visible, the number four, okay? And when we talk about the one, two, three, and four, we're talking about the double-ended wooden tools that come within the starter kit, okay? So the one, two, three, and four. And depending on which one you use will depend on the, the vibrancy or the brightness of the white line art. Last week, we started to introduce some white work onto the back of here. And what we did was, let me bring in, let me see, a white. Oh yeah, you can see that kind of, I put little asterisks in my in pencil to show that I was starting this way and I was going clockwise. So that I knew where I started and where I was finishing. Um, so we've just been building up and said, by leaving it between the layers, when we come back in today, it's gonna to intensify that whiteness. Now, we've been using two different um, ways of doing the white work. We can either use our 
A4 black mat, which comes in the starter kit, which is hard on one side and squidgy on the reverse. Okay, so we've been using that with the assistance of a cello bag. Okay, so the bags that your groovy plates come in, if you keep that single layer, pop that onto your black mat on the squidgy side, and it acts as a, a little bit of a, a resist when you're doing the white work. So if you're new to it, and then the other one we're going to be looking at is the pink mat. This for me is my safety net when it comes to white work. And I think I sort of touched on it on TV last week about the different, it's learning to get the, the right amount of pressure, not too heavy, not too light, um, warming up first before you go into it onto a scrap piece of parchment. Um, just a, a few little tips and tricks for you on that. So that's what we're going to be looking at today to build up the level of whiteness in those first two designs. Okay. So are we all good with that? If I waffled enough for you to get comfortable, who's still nibbling Easter eggs? Go on. Um, I bet there's a few of you who've still got a stash of Easter eggs, haven't you? I did pop to the shops yesterday, but the shops were bare of Easter eggs. Sometimes you can get... Um, some discounts got you after Easter. Um, but they've been selling them for weeks beforehand at very reasonable prices. Sue's still got some Easter eggs, right? We're off to see Sue. I bet they're at home, aren't they? Actually, I don't think I had. Did I have any Easter eggs over Easter? I think I had them before Easter. <laughs> some of them were, Ken, um, typing with your mouth full. Um, I think I had the Easter eggs before Easter because it was cheaper to buy an Easter egg than it was to buy a bar of chocolate. So, but there you go. Okay. Oh, we're good to go. <laughs> Mo says her bunny still has some feet left. Poor bunny. <laughs> okay. So to start off with, what we're going to do is we're going to look at the various different ball tools. Okay, to see what we're going to be working with. So let's put them in order. So a six mil ball tool, which is Linda's best friend. We've got back in stock now the 4.5 and the three mil. So we're going to be using those. We've got the, the largest of the um, shader tools. The other two sizes are imminent. Um, I've seen Mr. Dave in the building, so I'm sure he'll be... Um, popping down to, to pick up the, the other two sizes this week or next week. I think he's just waiting for the all clear on that. Um, so we've got those tools. Now, if you're starting out, then we've got the number three, the number four as well. But if you're looking to for a step up, for example, then definitely worth having a look at the, the various different ball tools and maybe the shader tool as well. Lillian says she's still got last year's egg. Goodness me. <laughs> Chocolate shouts is me as well. <laughs> but I must admit, a normal chocolate bar has to be at room temperature, but an Easter egg has to be in the fridge. Don't know why. Maybe it's that sound of cracking it on the, on the worktop. Um, but yeah, strange, isn't it? Easter egg has to come from the fridge but the, um, a normal bar of chocolate has to be at room temperature. Apart from Kit Kats, I like Kit Kats from the fridge. Who knows? Anyway, right, so, so let's have a look. I digress slightly, I know, I know. So I'm gonna bring in the black mat. I'm very picky, Ken, I am, I know. And I've got my cello bag and then so these two here that we started to build up our layers, um, I use the ball tools on. So we're going to repeat that process on the top ones. And then on these ones, we're going to have a look at the, the shade tool. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit more. Where's the nozzle gone? There it is. Hang on. There it is. Coming really close. Oh, happy birthday, Tina. Um, oh, are you in the clubs, Tina? Um, 
I'm sure Sue could look into that for you. Um, I know Sue's quite good at that. And if we've got your, if, so when we send out birthday cards, um, you have to be in the club um, and we need to know what your birthday, when your birthday is. We don't need to know what year, but we just need to know when your birthday is. That's another sort of little bonus as being part of the um, Clarity Craft Clubs. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's say, if, if we have no record of your birthday, then obviously we can't send you one, um, but you do have to be in the clubs to receive one. So I'm sure Sue can look into that for you. Maybe it has gone out. I mean, I haven't had post for at least a week, and I know I'm expecting some stuff at home. Um, so it could be, I mean, goodness me, raw mail prices have gone up today. Um, sent last week she's going to check for you there we go yes i mean all the raw mouse prices have gone up today as well so they are probably waiting to, to pick up stuff to send out once the prices go up um right okay so we was working with the the number six ball tool um last week so we're going to do one more layer with the number six ball tool and do you remember if i bring in where's my little sample sheet we was practicing on last week about where to position the ball tool on the line if i'm going to put white work in this area here i don't want the back of the ball tool on the line it needs to be the middle and we're just sort of gently i'm going on heavy just so you can see and we're just stroking or flicking outwards so i'm starting on the line and then flicking outwards okay and what that's doing it's concentrating on that area. now I've gone on really heavy so you can see that so what we're going to do now is you can see I'm covering the tip I can barely see it. well I can't see um, the outline but I know as Jane said last week if you've used the number one tool you can actually feel the ball hit the line okay so we're going to put some more, another level of white work on here. And we're going to just work our way round in a clockwise fashion. Okay, just like so. So we're using the largest ball tool for this area. like so there we go and we're just gently flicking i'm turning my work so it's more comfortable for me so i'm waiting um to pick up my new glasses from the opticians same frames, just different lenses. I bought some, <laughs> I've got some of those Dame, you know, not the, the sparkly ones, some magnified ones um, that I can use, but I can only use them when I'm looking at the artwork. If I look up, the whole room spins. Um, but yeah. I think they're due to be collected next week. It was interesting because when I went to the optician, because I went to an optician's when I initially got my glasses, and it was back in 2018, so very vocals. And, um, and then a couple of years back, I went to what I thought was the same optician, but it wasn't because they're both literally a couple of doors away from one another. Um, and um, got a new prescription back then, and they kept the same frames. And so when I went back to the original optician, because I preferred the originals after comparing it to the, the second one, and um, she said, oh, we haven't seen you since 2018. So I did confess that I'd been to a different optician, um, and she couldn't believe, she said, you're frames look as if they're 
brand new. So I said, well, to be honest with you, I said, I only wear them a couple of hours each week. And I explained what I did. Um, and um, so, um, so yeah, so I saved some money there. So I've just got to have the, the new lenses fitted. And it was interesting because, <coughs> excuse me, normally with the very focal, so the ones above the line is obviously for your distance and the ones below the line are for close up. And um, so she was doing the normal testing and she said, well, it doesn't look as if your prescription has changed. I said, well, no, it has. And so I had to explain to her that when I'm um, doing like YouTube or whether I'm doing TV, I mean, YouTube is fine because I'm sitting down, but when I'm at TV, I'm standing up. So the distance between my eyes and the work is a lot further. So what she had to do was adjust the prescription so that when I'm standing up, the lower part is actually in focus because it was becoming blurry. And she had to put special notes on that because they would. she said um, that when they came to make them, it would have got questioned because it's not the norm. So, um, <coughs> yeah, so um, so she did the note, and she was lovely, really lovely optician. Um, so, um, so, yeah, so that sh I should be able to pick those up. I think it's next week. I'm just waiting for the confirmation. Right, so we've gone through now, and we've started to add the second. And you can see, because I'm not going right up to the edge of the petals, not the edge, right up to the centre part of the flower, we're starting to build up that sort of like light and shade, aren't we? So what we're going to do now is go back to this one, which has been traced out with the number two tool, and we'll repeat that process as well. And the reason we've traced out in the various different size tools is so that you can see the difference of the, the flower once it's finished. because the lighter of the line, the easier it is. Sometimes it means you don't have to necessarily do as many layers as um, white work in order to, to get your completed project. But it also, you, you need to be able to see where those lines are. So when we come to the number four, which is barely visible, then for me, that's where not only the glasses will help, but also um, a light panel underneath as well. So we're just going through and we're building on our initial layer of white work. Okay. Has anyone completed their piece of artwork yet? Or are you sort of doing it in, in line with me and sort of doing it after Groovy Tuesday? And for me, I, I love the um, daily. I think this is a great one for learning this this skill. And especially in the, the smaller version as well. It's definitely more forgiving and more achievable. And then sometimes you'll think, oh, that ball... It looks way too big for that area. Um, what's all this talk of spiders? <laughs> Mary said, didn't I have my glasses on when I went the second time? No. <laughs> when I booked my second appointment, I thought I was booking the appointment with the, the first one. And it wasn't until... I turned up for the appointment of the second one that I realised it was the wrong one I booked. So I just had to go with it. Uh, it doesn't matter, does it? Because now they do like this 3D scanning of the eye where they can look in and... And, see. and the only thing... <laughs> Um, 
that the optician picked up on this time around was um, she said your eyes are perfectly healthy um, she said there's one eye um, that had I can't, a bit of cloudiness in the back she said but that's quite normal um, and um, and she said apart from that they're, they're in perfectly good health she said, the only thing I would say, she said, is that um, your tear ducts were blocked. So I went, oh, I said, I don't cry much. <laughs> um, and that was it. That was the only thing. And so she just said that when you have a shower, she said, whilst the, it's steamy in the room, just mash, mash massage, massage your eyelids. She said, no, solve the problem. All right, okay. All right, okay. So now we're starting to, to build up that level. Now this one, in this area here, it feels quite um, bulgy, if that makes sense. Whereas this doesn't feel as bulgy. And the reason being is, one, I've possibly gone on a little bit too heavy. But because of the bright white line art, in a way you're sort of weakening the parchment. Okay, so when you're working so close to the lines, then what can happen? It creates even more of a weakness. So this is where, as I said before, this is where you have to learn the, the patience because it is a process that you have to build up slowly. And, um, you can enhance it with a white pencil. So maybe you've got to this stage and you think, oh, that's it, I don't want to risk any more. Then you could stop at this point and then add white pencil behind it to enhance it. Okay. So what we're going to do now is I've used the, the number six. So this is where we're now going to move down to the 4.5 bottle. So if you have a look at the difference in the size, there's don't know if you can see there's definitely a, a different size in the bottle. Okay, so so we've finally got these back in stock. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to give another wipe with a tumble dry sheet, like so. Slurp of coffee, and I'm not saying you have to, but I just think that because I'm going over it again and again in one process, um, it will just help. So now, following the same process, okay, and we can see, I am going on a little bit more heavier than I would normally, just so that we can sort of see a result. Okay. Now, if when you're doing it, if you find that you're not making complete contact with that white line and you have got a little bit of, um, of a gap in between, we can sort that out when we move down to the free mill portal. Okay. Because we have a little bit more control with the smaller bottle. Okay, so we're just slowly building that level of whiteness up. That's it. And then as we're going round, you'll notice that what I'm doing is I'm flicking around the corner. So I'm following the shape of the petal. Okay. There we go. So we're just following it through. Like so. But you'll notice we're still not going right up to the the tip or the the inner part of the flower because we're creating that sort of that light and shade effect like so.
seems very quiet in the room today. Is everybody all right? Or is all this talk of chocolate Easter eggs so you, so you are foraging? Okay, so we're just slowly building up the layers. Looks weird upside down, doesn't it? So what else have I got to tell you on this lovely Tuesday morning? Um, so yeah, so Thursday evening at 7 p.m. You can join Barb live in the shack. Um, continuing on with the lovely alphabet. It's letter F, I believe. Barb said F for fantastic. I'm not sure how you're going to draw a fantastic, but I'm sure the bus driver has a plan on that. Um, so that's on Thursday at 7 o'clock. And don't forget, any of these episodes, um, any of these episodes, you can go back and watch again and again and again, all for free over on the Clarity YouTube page. Um, so there's lots over there to keep you company. So you can go back and watch the first sort of episode of the F4 Flutterbys. <laughs> um, on all of those. Um, then on Sunday, it's the first Sunday, I can't wait, it's the first Sunday of April. And the clocks changed. Who forgot to change their clocks at the weekend? I suppose nowadays the, the digital clocks do themselves automatically, don't they? It's, I'd say old fashioned, but you wind up ones often your wall clocks. Um, or your mantelpiece clocks. They're the ones that... And why is it always the cooker one needs changing? Um, so I, I did forget, but I didn't forget. Um, I knew they were changing, and normally I would change them before I go to bed. But I forgot, and then I woke up. But the first clock I look at is my phone, and that had updated anyway. Um... So, um, so yeah, so I forgot about that. Yeah, the clocks had changed. So it's now lighter evenings. There we go. You can see now as we're starting to, to build up the levels of whiteness. Um, where was it? Oh, yeah, so Sunday, first Sunday of the month, with Barb on TV um, with some lovely stamps. So Barb gave a, a sneaky peek in the shack on Thursday evening. She may even give you another sneaky peek this Thursday evening. Um, so, is it me or is this, this is becoming, it's not whiter, quicker, but yeah, I don't know. I suppose because you've got the contrast of the bright white, um, it just seems to look more effective with the, the softer tone of the, the white line art, doesn't it? Or is it just me? Um, so we just... Following the line art through, and we're just see. I'm using the tool, and I'm following the curve of the petals, like so. Ooh, a little bit heavy on that one. So I don't know whether I did go on heavy or not, or whether I say I think it just seems more prominent on a softer line.
Okay, and is it working? The sound of silence. <laughs> Am I back on track? Is it working? Is it working? Is it working? What's he saying? Can hear me. Yes. See, a quick little reboot of both the mic pack. Full batteries. So, yay, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> oh, dear. I bet you like this. I bet you just switched all the volume off, haven't you? I think someone pulled the plug somewhere. So, um, right. I don't even know what I'm saying now. Okay. Let's go back to our white work. I don't know if I'd finished or not now. Okay. I don't think I have. I think I got to about here. So we're still working with the uh, 4.5, like so. Funny sort of technology when it, when it doesn't want to play, it doesn't want to play. Um, <laughs> Isn't it funny how we, um, so we take sound for granted, don't we? Um, yeah. And then when the sound's not there, no, I'm definitely not blaming Sue. Sue's in another room. I'll just put it down to every now and again it just decides probably it's had the it's probably sick of the sound of my voice so it decides to turn itself off <laughs> but, um, yeah. at least we got well <laughs> at least we got the sound back and whether that's good or bad um, I thought I just hadn't spoken for a while and I thought oh <laughs> So this is the, so in a way now, we, we've done three layers, haven't we? We've done two layers with the six mil auto. So if I turn that over, there we go. So we've got two layers of the six and two layers of the six. And we've done one layer of the 4.5. I was telling you about Sunday. Yes, I was telling you about Sunday. So yes, Sunday, first Sunday of the month, three till five um, with Barb. Um, all things Japanese. Um, and no doubt Barb will give some more sneaky peeks on Thursday evening in the shack. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna do a little note on this piece of parchment on my practice piece. So let me just, Swap onto the, the hard mat. So we've used the six mil. We've used the four point five mil. Parchment doesn't sometimes like a biro. And then I'm going to use. Uh, let's do a pencil. And then. I got the free mill. So we've done one, two layers with the six mil. Um, and so far we've done one layer with the 4.5. So now I'm going to do another layer with the 4.5. Okay, so back to my soft mat, my um, bit of a safety net. Um, I thought we started the second daily with the shader, but it was probably me not listening. No, I don't think I did. I, oh, I can't remember what I did last week. I think, no, I think, was it this one I was showing last week? This was a, I think I digressed, didn't I? I, I traced a bit out and went with the shader tool on this one. Um, I'm going to keep the shader tool for these two down here. So, <coughs> excuse me. Just have a, guzzle of coffee. So, 
Second one is definitely flatter than the first. Must be the initial bossing that makes the difference. I think so. I think because what you're doing is this is where your white work is fighting the line art. Not fighting, but it's it's competing. That's a better word, competing. Whereas this one here, to me, this looks whiter than that one. But it's only, I think it's one of those like, not an optical illusion, I think it's the eye, isn't it? The eye is drawn more to the bright white line art than it is on this one. So what we're gonna do, we're gonna do one more layer using the 4.5. Where's my groovy guard? Um, there we go. So, we're still following the same process. Like so. Now what I can tell you is as I'm doing this, I can feel that it's definitely weaker in the areas closest to the white line art. Okay, so I know that I need to be extra careful. And also because I'm going on fairly quickly after each layer, um, I know I'm definitely weakening the parchment than what I would be normally. And I can also see that when looking at the, the opaid, I'm sort of not as close to the line art as I'd like to be on some of them. But we're going to fix that when it comes to dropping down to the free mill. Okay. But that will definitely have to wait until next week because um, we're really stretching and stressing the parchment by going on so quickly between the layers. So next week it would definitely have had a chance to have sort of bounced back a little bit. Okay. So we're just going round and round again, like we have been in a clockwise direction. Sorry, I've stopped talking. <laughs> Hasn't gone silent again. <laughs> um, yeah, so obviously you've got Barbara's blog this week um, to keep an eye on because um, all the, the lovely artwork for the TV shows will be appearing there as well. Um, you've got the Clarity Matters blog on Saturday with a Saturday share from Gracie and then a step-by-step -step project on Sunday. So it's always handy to keep an eye out on the blogs, especially in the lead up to a TV show. So would you believe it or not, my watch is just telling me it's time to stand. Time to stand? <laughs> Hang on, where am I on the wrong one? I don't know. I've gone to this one first, haven't I? I don't know now. Um, and it's also a good idea if you sign up to our newsletters. Um, we send you an email um, before every Shack and Groovy Tuesday TV um, Facebook Live. If we're doing a craft along, you get notified of that as well upcoming TV shows, um, special offers. Um, oh, and don't forget we've got our open days coming up in June. Um, so if you're interested in photon, two fun field days in Ditton. Um, so you can pop a link up to those. On our website, we've got a section called events and it gives you um, details of our open days and our summer retreats 
and our parchment retreats as well. So I'm sure Sue could pop a link up there. If you've got any questions, you can either um, give Sue a call or drop Sue an email. Um, and she's more than happy to help on that. So there we go. So now we're going to go to this one. Um, so yeah, I mean, the, the open days are the, the highlight of the, the Clarity events calendar, um, where we get to meet lots of lovely friends, old and new, and I don't mean age, um, And it's just full of demonstrations, make and takes, um, hourly raffles. I'm sure many of our friends are um, in the room, have been to our open days. Um, so yeah, so the open days and the summer retreats are in Ditton, near Maidstone in Kent. Um, so lots of free parking. We have refreshments on the day as well. Um, and then the summer retreats are in the same venue, a fantastic community center. Um, staff are absolutely amazing. Uh, always helpful. So, and then our, so that's the open days and the summer retreats are in Ditton. And then our parchment retreat, um, which is in October, that's in Tombridge Wells at the Spa Hotel. Okay, let's have a look. There we go. So now these ones here don't look as white, do they? Do I, have I missed them, do you reckon? Let's go back in and... Um, yeah, so the retreats are in blocks of two days. So I think it's either a Monday and a Tuesday and a Wednesday and a Thursday, or a Tuesday and a Wednesday, Thursday and a Friday, I can't remember now. Um, but all the dates are on the website. Um, and I know they're filling up really fast. So you get your club discounts as well. The only thing you don't get club discounts on um, is the open day tickets. Um, so, but you get um, club discount on the retreats. Okay, let's have a look. Yeah, it's certainly starting to come together, isn't it? I mean, we're still a fair way off of what um, Lynn's done here, but not much really. And then when we start to move in with the shade at all down here, I'm trying to hold off on using the shade at all um, until the other two come in, because I want to be able to use the different sizes for the different areas. Um, so, um, so yeah, so we're going to carry on using the ball tools in the top two next week as well. So I need to mark off that I've used, done another layer, because I'll forget come next week. Um, where is the pencil gone? Pencil. Okay, so that would indicate now that I've done two layers of the six, two layers of the 4.5, and then next week, we're going to move down to the three mil ball tool for the next layers. And there's, <coughs> excuse me, there's not saying, although we're going sort of from large down to small, we can still go back in again with the larger ball tool afterwards if we feel that maybe it needs a little bit more. And maybe you find that working with the, the six mil is, gives you, is easier for you to handle than it is with as you get smaller and smaller. But I know if you go with the smaller ones first, what can tend to happen is that whilst you're doing the white work, for example, so if I go to this one, so if I go with the, the six mil, I'm gonna go on really heavy. So that's just going up and down with the six mil. 
This is the, uh, no, that wasn't the six mil, that was the 4.5. So that's your six mil, that's your 4.5, and this is your three. And then if I go to the groovy number four tool, and then the number three. So if you're working in an area like this, say it's a petal, and you're using the number four tool, say the, the warning tool, you've got to be more slower when you're moving it along, okay? So if I take that, for example, and I take the number six ball tool, then I'm covering a larger area more easily. So there's less chance of when you turn it over, sort of seeing, um, I'm going to go in like that, where you've got sort of areas, let me come in on this one, where you have sort of areas of gaps in between, you see? Whereas using the larger ball tool, it's unlikely to happen when you're moving the ball tool from left to right or right to left, whichever way you go. So, um, so yeah, so next week, we're gonna carry on with the ball tools, Hopefully the shader tools may be back in next week. Um, and then we can then have a look at the shader tools afterwards. Um, so I hope you've enjoyed that. Thank you once again for joining me. I'm gonna let you all back to nibbling on your Easter eggs if you've got any left. Um, don't forget, so Thursday evening, seven o'clock in the shack with Barb, letter F for fantastic, or Thursday. <laughs> Depends on how you say Thursday, F, F. Um, and then on Sunday, um, Crate and Craft, three till five. Um, so thank you as always to the lovely Sue for popping all the links up and the fantastic design team. And obviously everyone at home for joining me again this week. And I hope to see you again next week. So take care now, stay in and craft, don't go out. No need to go out, regardless of what the weather's doing. Um, and I'll see you all next week. Take care now, bye-bye. <laughs>